Alex was the star of their high school, excelling as the best football player there. Rose, who was shy and loved books, had sincerely liked him since they were little kids. One sunny afternoon, Rose gathered all her courage and went to find Alex at the football field, where he was practicing for his semi-finals match. He was deeply focused on his training. Alex, she said softly, her voice barely audible. He looked up, surprised, and smiled. Hey, Rose, what's going on? I, um, Rose stuttered, her face turning bright red. I just wanted to say I really like you. Alex's smile faded for a moment. Oh, Rose, he said kindly. You're a good friend, but I don't see you in that way. Rose hope shattered. She forced a smile and mumbled something about needing to return a book before quickly leaving the football field. Tears welling up in her eyes. Years went quickly and Rose graduated with a degree in hospitality and the pain of rejection gradually faded. She got a new job and she loved it. She was a flight attendant and she used to spend her days flying through the skies and exploring new cities. The shy girl with big dreams had grown into a confident and beautiful woman. One crispy morning, Rose boarded a flight to Cape Town. Wearing her neat blue uniform, she checked the passengers to make sure everyone was settled. Then she felt a shock of surprise. In the front row, she saw a familiar face. It was Alex, looking clean shelven and with eyes wider than she had remembered. His gaze stayed on her longer than a stranger's would, showing a flicker of recognition and clear admiration. As Rose walked by, he smiled. For the first time in years, Rose had skipped a bit. The flight from Jogbag to Cape Town was short, giving Rose little time to think. Her mind raced with question. Why was Alex on this flight? Did he remember her after all these years? And did seeing him still make her butterflies in her stomach? Throughout the flight, Rose glanced at Alex. He seemed focused on the in-flight magazine, but she thought his eyes were occasionally looking at her way. It, has, it might have been a wishful thinking, but a spark of hope lit up inside her. As the plane started to descend toward Cape Town, an announcement came over the speaker. Attention passengers, we are experiencing a slight turbulence. Please remain seated and keep your seat belts fastened. The plane dipped slightly, making Rose shiver. What really worried her, though, were the scared looks on the passengers' faces. A young girl held her mother's hands tightly, her eyes wide with fear. Taking a deep breath, Rose switched into professional mode. Her training took over, and she repressed her nervousness with a calming smile. Walking down the aisle, she spoke firmly but kindly to reassure the passengers. There's nothing to worry about, she said. It's just a little bump in the road. Or should I say, in the air, the pilot is a pro and will be landing. Will be landing safely in no time. Howard seemed to calm some of the anxious faces. She stopped by the little girl, offering her a small toy airplane pin she kept for such moments. The girl slipped from a grateful smile, repressing her fear with wonder. Finally, the plane landed smoothly. Relief washed over the passengers as they applauded. Rose walked back to the front, her heart still pounding from the turbulence and her role as a calming influence. As she reached Alex's seat, he was gathering his belonging. He looked up and met her gaze, a hint of amusement in his eyes. Wow, he chuckled. You handled that turbulence like a pro. 
I almost thought you were going to end up in the next country. Just another day in the life of a flight attendant, Rose replied, trying to stay calm, though her cheeks turned faintly pink. Alex lingered his eyes thin on her face. So, Rose, is it? It's been a while. His simple statement brought back a flood of memories. Unrequited love, whispered dreams, and painful rejection. Part of her wanted to walk away to escape the emotional whirlwind. But another part, the bolder, more confident part, held its ground. It has, she confirmed, a hint of challenge in her voice. A lot can change in a few years. Alex smiled, fluttered slightly at her remark. He cleared his throat, a nervous gesture she vaguely remembered from high school. Yeah, you could say that, he said, scratching the back of his neck. Listen, I don't want to hold you up. But he hesitated, glancing around as if he was searching for the right words. Would you maybe be interested in grabbing a coffee sometime? Catching up, I mean. Rose felt her pulse quicken. Here, it was the invitation she dreamed of years ago from the same boy who had once hadn't known her feelings existed. But years had passed and Rose wasn't the shy lab teenager anymore. This time, she was in control. Actually, she replied, a playful glint in her eyes. My shift ends in about an hour. What about how about you wait for me at that cute little cafe across the street? The one with the blue awning? A surprised love escaped Alex Leeds. The Seagulls restaurant? That place hasn't changed a bit. You used to spend hours there studying, right? Rose couldn't deny the warmth spreading through her chest. It seemed some things like favorite cafe and old memories never truly faded. Maybe, she admitted with a sly smile, but this time I might be interested in something a little less academic. Their eyes met for a moment, a spark of something unexpected passing between them. It wasn't the wide-eyed adoration of the past, but a newfound connection tinged with curiosity. Sounds good, Arex replied, genuinely smiling. See you there in an hour, Rose. As he left the plane, Rose leaned against a seat, emotions swelling inside her. Nervousness tried to take over, but Kosha's excitement was stronger. Would this be just a friendly catch-up or could it be something more? The next hour felt like an eternity. Rose rushed through her post-flight task, her mind constantly different, drifting to Alex. She tried to focus on her duties, but she kept seeing Alex with Alex's face and smile. Finally, she finished her work and left the airport. The Seagull's restaurant was across the street, its blue yawning standing out in the afternoon sun. Inside, the familiar smell of coffee and cinnamon pastries filled the air. Rose looked around and saw Alex at a booth by the window, engrossed in a book. When the bell above the door chimed, he looked up and smiled warmly. Rose, he said, you made it. As Rose sat down from Alex, a wave of nostalgia hit her. The worn red leather and chipped wooden tables were the same ones she had spent countless afternoons at with textbooks and daydreams. This place brings back so many memories, Rose said, breathing in the familiar coffee aroma. Me too, Alex agreed, closing his book. Remember all those debates about the place, best place to sit? By the window for people watching or in the corner for peace and quiet. Rose laughed. You are always the people watcher. Soaking up the stories outside. I preferred my own little world buried in a book. Alex's gaze softened. Maybe 
that's why we never really connected back then different worlds you know the statement hung in the hair with a hint of unspoken regret rose played with a sugar bucket packet unsure of how to respond maybe she said softly but people change alex world can collide in unexpected ways he leaned towards searching her eyes true enough you seem different rose confident and happy a warmth spread across rose's cheek life has a way of shaping you she replied her voice stronger they talked easily catching up on the years that had passed rose leaned about learned about alex travel as a photographer his adventures taking him to beautiful places along the world he was fascinated by rose's stories of flying experiencing new cultures and the thrill of landing in new cities however the past still lingered so about high school alex began hesitantly i know i messed up rose heart tightened was this the apology she had longed for you did she confirmed steadily but that was a long time ago i know alex said leaning back i was young and self self absorbed i didn't realize how many how my words affected you his words stung but rose felt a sense of acceptance she didn't need an apology for a teenage crush that went wrong she had moved on and grown into a different person it's okay she said giving him a small smile water under the bridge and all that a flicker of disappointment crossed alex's face an emotion rose couldn't quite understand was he hoping for a declaration of love from the shy girl he once knew i should probably head back rose said breaking the comfortable silence alex stood up his eyes searching hers wait he reached into his pocket and pulled out a business card here in case you want to grab another cookie maybe catch up some more you can call me rose took the card feeling its weight which was a simple gesture yet it held possibility of something more thanks alex she smiled with a hint of mystery i must just take up on that offer as she stepped out of the cafe the setting sun bathed her face in a golden glow the future stretched before her an unwritten chapter full of possibilities the encounter with alex had stirred up many emotions weeks turned into months and rose's life remained hectic her job as a flight attendant kept her traveling around the world meeting new people and experiencing new things every day despite the chaos alex's business card was a constant reminder of their unexpected reunion one rainy afternoon while stuck in london due to a technical issue with the plane rose stared at the card and sighed she felt an unfamiliar longing she missed their conversation the way alex's eyes lit up and when he talked about his photography and the easy connection they had developed on a whim she took out her phone and typed a text stuck in london thanks to a great grumpy airplane care for a virtual coffee date alex replied immediately bringing a smile to her face absolutely it's rainy here too any chance of virtual pastries this started a weekly tradition every sunday rain or sunshine rose and alex set aside an hour for their virtual coffee dates they shared stories pictures from their travels and grew closer with each conversation one sunday while rose was telling a funny story about a demanding passenger alex interrupted her laughter rose i need to tell you something his serious tone sent a shiver down her smile her smile faded what is it 
These past few weeks, talking to you every Sunday, it made me realize something important. His voice trailed off, leaving Rose in suspense. The silence seemed to last forever. Just as she started to worry, Alex spoke again. Rose, I miss you. Not just a friend, but well, more. A brush crept up Rose's cheek. Was this real? Was Alex finally feeling the same way she had for so long? Alex, she whispered, her voice thick with emotion. I... Before she could finish, her phone rang. It was a call from her captain informing her that the plane was repaired and they would be depart and they would be departing soon. Rose stared at the phone screen, emotion swelling inside her. Their conversation was cut short. Now she had to waste to wait not just for their next virtual dates, but for the next answer that hung in the balance. The wait for the next Sunday call seemed endless. Each notification on her phone filled her with anticipation, only to be followed by disappointed that it wasn't Alex. Finally, Sunday arrived and with it the familiar buzz on her phone. Rose, Alex's voice came through the line, sounding nervous. Are you there? Yes, Alex, she responded, her voice shaking and little. I am. I am so sorry about the other day, he said. That call could it have come at our worst time. Rose laughed, relieved they could finally continue the conversation. Don't worry about it. Flights have a way of interrupting everything. They quickly fell back into their usual comfortable banter. But this time there was a new tension. Alex Aliawad still hung in the air. A silent question waiting to be addressed. So, Alex eventually said, breaking the silence, what you, why, what you are going to say. Taking a deep breath, Ross decided to be honest. I was going to say that I miss you too, Alex. Not just as a friend, but more. A sigh of relief came from the other end. Thank goodness, Alex said laughing. For a minute there, I thought I'd ruined everything. Their conversation flowed easily, now with a new level of intimacy. They talked about their dreams, fears, and the possibility of a future together. They realized that the virtual connection was just the beginning of something deeper. However, the distance between them remained a challenge. Rose's job kept her traveling constantly, while Alex's photography projects often took him to remote location. They wanted more than just Sunday call. They wanted to be together in person. When evening was crossing the internet during a layover in Paris, Rose found a photography competition. The grand prize was a two-week stay in a secluded island villa, with travel expenses covered. It was the perfect chance for them to meet outside the digital world. With a pounding heart, Rose texted Alex the competition link. His enthusiastic response came quickly. They spent the next few weeks working on their entries, pouring their creativity and growing love into their photographs. Finally, the results were announced. Rose held her breath as she refreshed the competition website. Her heart soared when she saw, when she saw Alex's photograph, a stunning shot of a lone lighthouse in a storm, had won the first place. The news filled, when, filled them with excitement. Their phone calls were now about planning their island getaway. Rose pictured walking in long, clean beaches, dinner by the candlelight with ocean views, and hours spent talking, sharing dreams, and finally closing the distance between them. When Rose arrived at the destination, Finding Alex was easy. He stood apart from the crowd, his camera around his neck, smiling as soon as he saw her. Time seemed to stand still as they ran towards each other. 
the noise of her suitcase drowned out by the racing hugs. The hug was the result of months of longing, expressing all the feelings that had developed. Alex brushed a strand of hair from her face, his eyes warm and sending shivers down her spine. You are even more beautiful in person, he said, his voice full of emotion. Rose blushed, unable to respond. So you are, she whispered. A jeep arrived, driven by a friendly islander. Alex had hired to take them to their villa. Finally, they reached their destination, a quaint white villa on a cliff overlooking the ocean. The villa was their sanctuary, cozy and simple. It promised countless conversation, shared laughter, and moments under the stars. The first days flew by as they explored. They walked along the beach, collected seashells, and buried messages in the sand. Alex took photos of Rose, laughing by the waves, his eyes showing a love he no longer had to hide. One night, under a starlight sky, Alex confessed why he had been distant in high school. You are the smartest girl in class, he said with a, sigh, with a shy smile, and I was too busy trying to be the cool guy to notice you. Rose laughed. Realizing how boys often complicated things. Maybe that's why fate gave us a second chance, she said, leaning into him. Their first kiss under the stars was electric, filled with years of unspoken longing and a promise of a future together. The island became their heaven, with their love growing with each sunrise and sunset. But reality soon intruded. Their two weeks were ending and they had to face what came next. Their careers, full of travel and unpredictability, seemed to clash with a regular relationship. Rose's flight schedule and Alex's photography trips meant they had to choose between their passions and their new love. As they boarded the plane back home, they felt a mix of sadness and hope. The island had been a dream, but they couldn't stay there forever. Hand in hand, they faced the future. Their love story, unexpected and imperfect, was at another crossroads. Would they find a way to bridge the distance and keep their love alive? Or would their paths separate again? Only time would tell. One evening, during a frustrating call with dropped connection and glitches, the tension broke. This it seemed working, is it? Rose said, frustrated. Alex, looking worried on the screen, sighed. You're right. The distance makes everything so hard. Silence filled the space between them, broken only by the curtain connection. Tears welled up in Rose's eyes, blurring Alex's image. But Alex said, his voice stronger, we can't give up. There has to be a way. Hope sparked in Rose, giving up was easy, but their love, born from a second chance, deserved a fight. What if, Rose stated, an idea forming in her mind. She spent days researching her phone, buzzing with call to other flight attendants. The idea was unconventional, a leap of faith, but it promised to close the distance. Finally, she called Alex, her voice trembling as she explained her plan. Listen, she began. Many airlines offered transfers based on seniority. What if I applied to transfer to a base in a city where you spend a lot of time for your photography? There was a stunned silence. Then a slow smile spread across Alex's face on the screen. Rose, that's crazy. It must just work. The process was tough. There were interviews, evaluation, and long days of waiting over the next few weeks. Finally, Rose received an email saying she had secured a transfer to the base in Paris. 
a city Alex frequently visited for his photography. The news of her transfer excited everyone. Alex's parents, who had been unsure about their long-distance relationship, now saw how much Rose was willing to be to do to be with their son. Rose's friends, initially doubtful, now admired her bravery and cheered on her. Their first reunion in Paris was filled with intense emotions. Seeing each other after weeks apart brought chaotic joy, laughter, missed kisses, and whispered promises about a future together. Life in Paris wasn't perfect. Alex still had assignments that took him away for weeks, and Rose had early mornings and late nights due to her job. But they treasured their stolen moments, walking along the scene, moving nights with takeout, and simply waking up next to each other. One spring evening, while walking through the Luxembourg Gardens, they, spot, they stopped watching a group of teenagers playing tag. Their laughter reminded us of their own high school days, marked by unspoken feelings and missed connections. Rose smiled, feeling nostalgic, looking at Alex, who shared her smile. She realized their love story had come full circle. It wasn't straight, a straightforward journey, but it had many twists and, try and turns, proving the power of second chances and the courage to follow your heart. As they walked their hand, as they walked hand in hand, their love story, a testament to connection, Sword high than ever before. That's the end of my story. I hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah, so I've stopped doing AI voiceover. I'll be using my voice due to YouTube restriction. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know some people have been complaining about my voice, but I'm trying to make it better and better. I hope you enjoyed this story. Please like, subscribe, and share. And share for more stories. Thank you. Bye.